But I, I thought I'd just re read you a couple of, just a little bit. This is my mother's book. My, oh, okay. my mother sure. was a book person. We'll go right to that. She, uh, okay. she worked at the, uh, the bookshop down in Boise. Okay. And, uh, and she wrote this uh, for, for herself to begin with, but uh, it's, uh, it's made some lasting impression on a lot of people who care about stuff. Like I that. love it. She says, La April, laughing her girlish laughter is upon me. The water is completely gone from the basement. Old Grimes is still threatening the lane. That's the name of the creek we're on, Grimes Creek. Old Grimes is still threatening the lane, and I park my car outside the gate lest I get trapped by a sudden surge of water. April is also the month my Social Security payments begin. Such a lovely little brown paper envelope, meaning, indeed, to me, security. I remember other days. In the raw new land of South Idaho, it was shove and scrape, and if you had bad luck or lost your strength, you were done for. I was raised in mortal fear of disability or some natural disaster. We walked a thin, tight rope with no net. Two years of crop failures could wipe out the savings of 10 years, and that, of course, was part of the reason for large families. More hands to work the land, someone to help you when your strength was going. Children were sometimes your only security against dying in a ditch. There was no cushion. Carry on. Read that whole dang thing, please. I remember the bewildered old ladies, widows who had lost their husband and whose small hoard of savings had been swept away by illness or death. Sometimes they had no one left to turn to, and then it was the county poor farm with bare, endless corridors, echoing board floors, cheerless charity. Sometimes they had children or relatives who took them in and sheltered them, but the extra mouth was a burden, and they knew it. Old ladies, sitting in the far corner of the room when company came, thinning hair dragged back into a tight bun, knobby hands folded in apron laps, soft, list slippers slipped, to ease the painful bunions. Apologetic, silent, arthritically awkward, or dredging from one task to another, pathetically anxious to please a harried daughter-in-law. Relics, they call them, flotsam from an earlier culture, bleached, dry, juiceless, helpless, women who had once been strong and beautiful and suffered from that memory. Please finish. I love it. Then were the ones, there were the ones who still had a measure of strength but were trapped in that dreadful bind that women were trapped in so little time ago. Not enough education to teach, too old to be a clerk or a waitress. There was little other opportunity. Poverty was a sandpit and they could not scale the walls. They fought, sometimes gallantly, sometimes bitterly, but mostly they lost. Their lives subsided into an empty, endless waiting even when their families cared for them and kept them safe, they still lacked their independence. And for as much as your people care for you and you for them, absolute financial dependence is a terrible, crippling thing. Social Security helped to change that, gave the elder, uh, elderly a measure of dignity, not to have to ask for little things. Silly little things that made you remember you were still a woman. To be able to buy a lipstick, 
to ease your drying skin with a pot of cream and a small but solid contribution to the monthly bills, enough so you could have a room of your own. With luck, a place of your own. Here in my mountains, I am remarkably fortunate. Living is cheap. I have seven acres of room. Room for dignity and freedom. Privacy to cry when I am sad and to dance when I am gay. It all comes in that little brown paper wrapper and it lets me spit in anybody's eye.